Hey everyone, welcome to another video. And today we are going to do a formal introduction to our 1989 Mitsubishi Montero LS. Uh, we saved this Montero uh, last year, right around March and June. Uh, I first saw this Montero early part of 2022, I believe. But yeah, I did a video on that. That's right here on the link. Go ahead and check it out. But uh, yeah, we're, I never really did a formal video, an introduction to it. Uh, that video right there was just showing uh, little bits and pieces, uh, how we saved it. Uh, but I, in today's video, I am going to actually do a formal walkthrough video of the Montero uh, as it is right now. So the story on this Montero is it was owned by uh, a gentleman named Phil. Um, the business, as you can see, is still on the side of Montero. He ran a detailing business, and um, he owned this truck brand new. I believe he bought it up north, and uh, it was only up north for a short time before he moved down to Florida and started his um, uh, detailing business. Basically, this was a family vehicle slash a business vehicle. Uh, his kids uh, pretty much grew up, took him to school, did all that. There was a history with him and his family with this vehicle. He did love this vehicle. Till uh, one day uh, he was driving to the business to work and um, he noticed that it was overheating on the highway. He was able to make it back to his business, but it was too late. After some, I guess, short diagnosis, and I guess he took it to the shop, uh, it blew a head gasket. It stayed parked for 10 years. He never got around to fix it. He wanted to, but he owned the business and that was the priority and just never got around to trying to fix the Montero. So it sat for 10 years. He had some intention to fix it, but just never did. So that's when I came about and I actually had a friend who got his vehicle tinted at his business. And he knew that I liked the Monteros and saw this one and automatically told me about it. Said the guy was probably looking to sell it. Uh, I was curious, I talked to the wife. She agreed to look at it. And basically, ultimately she gave the approval. Yeah, let's go ahead and buy it. So we actually bought the Montero. The sale was final around March last year, and I ended up picking it up about a month later. And it's been sitting at my best friend's um, shop over here. He has about five acres of land. He runs a business fixing cars, doing body work and all that stuff. So it is sitting out here safely on his property till uh, I gather all the stuff that I need to start working on it. Um, I, as you know, I have other vehicles I am trying to get up and running and I've been slowly gathering parts on this Gen 1 uh, since we got it. So the Montero here has 248,000 miles uh, when the head gasket gave out. What he said was it was running perfectly. The story was he never had an issue like I said and unfortunately he ran hot and he was on the highway and just never noticed in time and therefore when it ran hot Blue head gasket. He said it ran perfectly. He even put brand new BF Goodrich uh, all terrains on it um, right before it uh, blew the head gasket, which was unfortunate. Uh, they were really meaty. The tires still had a lot of tread left. So we're going to go ahead and start with the exterior. Uh, these are the BF Goodrich I was talking about. They were meaty. They still had plenty of life it left on them when he when it blew the head gasket. So these tires, probably maybe a few hundred miles on it, maybe a thousand or so. But yeah, they're fresh. I mean, you can see there's a lot of tread on them. The auto hubs, pomegranate wheels. I uh, don't know if that's a factory OEM Mitsubishi option, but that's a sidestep. So that's the vinyl for his uh, business here. We're going to have to obviously take that off, peel it off. Once we get started restoring it. It looks like a factory size spare tire. Tow hitch. Bumpers are clean. And calves probably need to be replaced. That's easy. 
but there's no dents. He said this vehicle has never been in an accident. I mean, there's just surface rust, nothing crazy on it. It's all, this is all can be sand and redone. The lenses, surprisingly, aren't really faded. Maybe just polish them up. Uh, the only spots we're going to have to pay attention to and give some care right here on the gutters. Uh, this is rusted out right here. Um, so we're going to have to like shave this down and weld in new metal. Uh, this looks like this is the only spot on the Montero in the rear that has this rust issue. Mostly, mostly on this side. Now as you can see there's a hole through there. But the rest of it looks good. Um, let's see here. Front we're missing the washer nozzles. That's no big deal. Front bumper looks really good. The driver's side mirror is missing. That disappeared. Let me show that. That's missing. Actually, that's fine. I've already gathered, like I said, I've been gathering parts, so I already have a replacement for those. All right, we're going to do the interior now. Now, for a vehicle that's been sitting out in the Florida sun for 10 years, the interior is in amazing shape. Um, obviously, there's going to be normal wear and tear, some parts that have uh, deteriorated through time. Uh, these door seals are going to have to be replaced at some point. But... The seats are in great shape. There's no rips on them. I have the factory bouncy seats. So the craze right now is the new Tacomas with their suspension seats. This is Mitsubishi's iteration of a bouncy seat back in the first gen Monteros. So you have your soft and hard settings. So you just twist this to change the settings and all that good stuff. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool feature. And I stand corrected on the mileage. I said 240, it's actually 254,000. Uh, let me get in the Montero here. So the dash is in really good shape, just needs to get clean. The inclimator is still filled with fluid. He must have replaced a factory oil pressure gauge at some point. Voltage right here. Some old Clarion head unit. Tape deck is Front seat's in good condition. Headliner is not dropping. Four speed uh, automatic. Transfer case. Let's see if it can get it into uh, it's four high, four low. Back to two wheel drive. That's good. Leather steering wheel, steering wheel. Kind of deteriorated, but still in re decent shape. Here's the passenger side. Door panels look good. Old CD player thing. There's a leak somewhere, so I'm going to have to. 
tend to that at some point. I'm gonna have to figure out where the leaf coming from. I have a feeling it's probably one of these this weather strip here or the door strip. Front seat still in really good shape. Uh, let's check out the back seat. Here's the back. Really good shape. Seats are in good shape. Like I said, this thing is in great shape for its age and for how long it's been in sitting. And then here's the cargo area. Um, tailgate is not opening from the outside, so um, probably the latch or something, the locking mechanism, the handle out there has broken, so I'm going to have to get through it from the inside. But that is the back area. And underneath, honestly, very minimal. I don't think there's any rust issues. Uh, you can tell right away if there's rust issues from back here. Usually if it's a badly rusted vehicle, you'll see a rust building up in the back more often. And as you can see, the diffs, trailing arms, good shape. Uh, I mean, there is some surface rust on the frame. This is the middle right here where the transmission is. Can't, pretty much all I can get as far as view, but there's not a lot of rust. So that's a big plus. So next is the engine. The big issue on this Montero. Here it is. Um, it definitely looks like it's been sitting for 10 years. Uh, there's a lot of oxidation on the top part of the motor. Intake, the alternator. Some surface rust buildup on the pulleys. Uh, that battery's long gone. I'm gonna have to really check this radiator if I can save it, if it can be re-rotted or repaired. Um, it's like a Modine radiator. I don't know if this has been worked on before, if this is the factory, I'm not sure. But my next trip here to start breaking down the Montero and figure out things is I'm gonna check the cooling system, take out the radiator, all this, see if I can turn the motor by hand. If I can turn it by hand, that's a really good sign. Um, and then I might even attempt to even start it, put some fresh oil, new filter, uh, and just see if it'll even start drain the fuel. But, uh, that's my plan. But yeah, that's the motor. 254 and it blue head gasket. It sucks. Probably would have been still running. But the plastics here are in really good shape. I mean, they're not yellowish. I mean, this is still good shape. I think, honestly, some TLC, some cleanup. I think this is this this truck will be running just fine. So that's the uh, a little walkthrough video, formal one of the Gen One, uh, as it is as of right now. Like my other builds. Like I recently did a video on a phase three build on my 1998 Montero. Uh, all my builds I go through, I try to set up five phases. And typically the first phase is to get the vehicle to a perfect, a good starting point, which usually is fake, uh, focusing on maintenance, 
and just fixing it up before I even do anything, um, I guess, fun for the vehicle, like adding accessories and doing stuff. The, the main goal in this build, unlike the 98 Montero and the 2002 Montero that, uh, that's also on the list of uh, things that we're working on, this first gen is really a resto build. I'm not trying to go crazy with it like the 98 or the, um, even the 2002. I'm just trying to get this back to a normal stock-like condition. Um, there will be some light mods. The most likely there will be wheels and tires, uh, suspension, and some exterior, exterior bits and pieces. So I can enjoy driving it. It's near stock-like. And if I want to take it off-road once in a while, um, we can do it. Um, it will be set up for it to be able to do that and be able to maybe camp one or two days with it uh, down in the future once we get it running. But uh, yeah, these, these Monteros are great. These are legendary. They have, they're gaining in value. Um, they have a spot in automotive history. This put Mitsubishi on the map as far as in the Dakar. Um, you've probably heard it many times. To any Montero owner, they're going to say something about uh, the Montero Pajeros won the Dakar 11 times. Yes, that's part of its history, uh, but the appeal of the older SUVs, the Japanese SUVs, the boxy style, uh, to me, it's a timeless look. And uh, you just, if you just do a few things to add some, to modernize it, um, they look exceptionally well. So, but yeah, that's the goal on this Montero. Nothing really crazy. Trying to get it clean, kind of upscale stock look, if that makes any sense. So uh, yeah, I'm glad. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, I just wanted to do a formal introduction to it, where it sits now. So for those that do follow the build, uh, you can maybe appreciate the progress it's gone through from, from what it is now to eventually the end goal, the end product of the build. Thank you again for watching. Please subscribe um, if you want to follow this build or any of our other builds. And please be safe. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again. So, see ya.